Hello, this is Amy from MyTradeAims.com, Aims of Stress-Free Trading. Today I'm going to talk about uh, this setup that I saw. I was scrolling through the charts, as you can see, all of them are down here in the hourly chart, the hourly time frame. But I looked at this um, dollar against the Mexican currency, peso, or whatever it is, <laughs> peso. <laughs> Sorry about that. And I asked, why is this a great setup? Now, I'm not talking about this one. I'm talking about the hourly setup, which I'm going to show you in a bit. And I want to also talk about how could you have planned it? And you probably don't know right now why I'm saying that, because you don't know the, you haven't seen the hourly chart. And, and the other thing I want to talk about is what gave away that it was going in this direction. So let's talk about the uh, the daily chart. Now, a few years ago, when I when I was transitioning from only trading the five minute and one minute chart, I kind of thought the hourly chart was a really higher time frame, and then the daily was kind of like an unthinkable. So I thought that the connection between the daily and the hourly was not that close. But that was probably because I was used to the higher density chart. So what is the density of the chart? The density of the chart would be if you start from the top to the bottom and if this space, the, 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 the number of points that you can have on the vertical axis here. So the denser this is, this would be the density of that market. So if the market moves quite a lot, quite a lot of pips within its lifetime and within that particular chart, it's it, a higher density. So everything was higher density up to 2012 because it was high volatility. And so the difference between the daily chart and the hourly chart was quite a lot. So you would have like a chart with three and 400 pips inside a daily candle. So within that three and 400 pips, if you were trading like the way we do on indicator based patterns, you could see several of the setup that we trade you could have seen that several times appear inside this one candle and as time went and market kind of normalized i wouldn't say they lost volatility they actually normalized itself and obviously volatility actually had gone down as well but when they normalized the density wasn't that much so what we call volatility was between so the price difference so market was not moving three and 400 pips a day. Most of the market started moving 100 to 150. The ones that were moving 150 to 100, you know, 300, 400, like Euro Yen and the Pound Yen and uh, even Euro Dollar was moving to 150 and something. They all went down to about 80 to 150 moves. So 150 moves these days are like a really good move. Now, if you look at this chart, the trend is up, up to this point. Even at the end of this candle, the trend is up. But there are two important points here. One is the, the psychological time frame. So it has been sideways during this month. In this month, there was a little bit of craziness. So it went up and then went down. Before that, it was going sideways, sideways, sideways. But then around here on the first day, now this is the, the fractal that we call SIP, the chaos influx point, CIF. A CIP uh, and it, it it so happens that it is always at the start of a session so on this chart it's the month so the first day of the month it, actually a day before there was an indication that the market has positioned itself so there were the big boys started buying already they kind of took the orders from here when it started going down so it's like a fake out and then up here and if you waited the next day it closed outside the range and this was your cue to actually buy this market and have your stop loss here. And if you didn't do that and you were watching it throughout the month, it just went steady up. But then at the start of the new month, which is the start of a new quarter as well, like a new after the, the summer, the fall season begins. You get this indication one and then on the day later. So these two strong candles have now taken away everything that was there 
and then when it was followed by a pullback up this actually gave its position away but you can follow this you can see this pattern on the hourly chart so I'm gonna put a, a box here so I, I've boxed these three days and now let's check them on the hourly chart so can you see that actually the box should have been if I, if I if I draw it here then it includes this day as well so as you can see it, it covered the start of the wave 3 as you can see it's a strong wave 3 and then the wave 3 continued on this day and then on the third day of the wave 3 it was the end of the 3 this pattern of wave 3 is what we trade and on the hourly chart most of your setup one would be a three day wave three or a two day wave three or then the shortest possible would be the one day wave three and half a day wave wave four and then the next day you have wave five and this occasion you have what we call the maximum setup i wouldn't go for anything that has more than a three day wave three so one two three and then it kind of took like a very tiny wave four now here the first cross of the zero line was when the wave four was confirmed by that time price had gone into the territory where we call uh, you know the fruit uh, the apple zone because between the purple and and the, the gator and the gator is sleeping now it's actually crossed to the other side but the trend is still down and the trend if you if you take your trend from the purple line or if you take your trend from the Elliott wave indication then the trend was down because the three was down now on the daily chart the trend was actually up but that doesn't matter to us because what we're dealing with is that we are dealing with a few days. We're dealing between minimum two days of price action to maximum four to five days of price action. So in this occasion, we have one, two, three, and then the fourth day has become our, um, our trade. So how could you have planned it? Now, the way you could have planned it that if you were following this market, from one, two, three, it was like one, two, and these were your two indications. So all you needed was to have a quick check at the close of the market, at the end of the day, what was going on. And this is the prelude to the strategy that I probably will release, which I call the Waltz. We've tested it out with a few of the members and it's hidden now. But there's a, there's a dilemma still in my mind whether I should do that or shouldn't do that because we can actually achieve the same results with this. But it's a total new concept because you, you wouldn't need uh, all these indicators. But at the same time, you would still need them because you are used to this pattern. And this pattern is sublime. It's It, it gives you 80% chance of success. And as we speak, it's it's going down. So the way you could have planned is that to monitor these t uh, t uh, three days, which is the wave three. And then you would know that either this day will create a wave four sideways and the next day will break out or this one will break out. So. Um, I've already spoken about what gave away and that it was going down. What gave away was this scenario and these strong candles that it was going down. And if you understood that, then you can translate those candles into the wave three. So the two strong candles on the daily chart are actually the wave three on the hourly chart. And a minor uh, wave four here, and you have a red dot, and here you, your risk is very, very low. So this is the Frankfurt Open. So if you woke up before the Frankfurt Open and you sat there, you saw it, that you have this, and this is that dog face I used to call and we call, then we started calling him Llama, but at the end we call it the Scooby. So this is a Scooby. The Scooby is a one, two in the direction, in the new direction. So this one, two. And so if you saw it here, you'll have the stop loss here. So if you put your pending order here, your stop loss will have to be if it was aggressive stop loss, it would be here and here. If you put it there, because that would be the peak of wave four, that would be your conservative stop loss. You put that there and you walk away because you know that this thing is going to hit Tiger Zone 1 because 80% of the time, and this is, the, this is the main secret of the success, is that we know that if a wave five is going to be a wave five, and listen to this carefully, if a wave five is going to be a wave five, 80% of the time, it's going to go and hit Tiger Zone 1. So you could have taken the trade here, added on below this or any other of the signal and carried on. And one more thing, you can go to the 15 minute chart. And if you didn't trade that one, then you could have gone to the 15 minute chart 
and actually looked at the same scenario the way we discussed it in the hourly chart so if you see the same pattern like on the hourly chart you had this wave 3 on the M15 you do that same thing in two days it's a two day pattern so on your on yesterday which is Friday the strong three down and then as the market opened on Sunday night it went sideways and then in the morning uh, it didn't really drop down but where, as the new uh, US session starts and this is the Americas you have another setup once so you have the red dot and the sleeping gator this is a little bit uh, I mean if it was a little bit in it would be a little, even better but this is a setup one you would take it here your stop loss would be there and where is it going again we know that if it is going to be a wave five right then it is going to hit target zone one and it's somewhere here so you will probably have let's call that 41 you probably have like double or 2.5 times of your so, so you so you what you want to do is that you want to find markets which are actually moving with these impulse candles or even when it was going up so if you only trade the markets that have an open gator so whether it goes up or whether it's reversing you will be able to trade them on the hourly chart and if you can see the pattern going on in the hourly chart you can actually then trade them on the 15 minute chart as well uh, this this is really powerful this is very simple i mean oh i can't really say it's very simple it becomes very simple but when you understand this underlying pattern so it takes a bit of time to understand but once you understand it this pattern is there it, that's what it is three four five three four five and that's why we call it three four five s1 i hope this was useful to you thank you and if you like this video please like subscribe to the channel and share this video and please uh, leave a comment really appreciate it thank you